Welcome to the Link Building Show. It's episode 22. I'm here with Lara and we're going to talk about how to deal with grumpy journalists. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> grumpy journalists, God. <laughs> I know. Definitely get a handful of them. Yeah. They're very, I mean, I would say one thing to remember is if you're sending out like over a thousand emails a day mm-hmm. or however many in a week, if you only get like one or two emails back um, regarding a press release that you've sent out saying that they don't, they're not interested or anything like that, I think that's quite good going. Like yeah, one it's or like two, 1%. Like, yeah. So don't let it get you down. That's what yeah. I would say. And it might be that they previously covered that and you have chosen a list that they would have covered it, but maybe yeah. they're doing something that's a bit more relevant to them now, so it's not relevant anymore, and they're just like, oh, this is not for me, yeah. which is fine. And also they can change what they want to talk about and what they want to write about all yeah. the time, so we might not necessarily know that they've, I don't know, switched companies or switched everything that they want to even talk about, so yeah. you never know. It could be like women's fashion, they write about, <laughs> and we've sent them a piece on women's fashion, mm. but it could actually be like garden fashion, yeah. their niche too, and they don't want to talk about Chanel or something. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have like an approach, like your response to when you get um, an email? I basically thank them for letting me know that they're not interested in what I've sent to them mm-hmm. or they don't want to receive emails. Because um, then at least it shows that you've gone to the effort of reading the email and sending them one back explaining maybe why they were re- receiving the email in the first yeah. place. And then I just kind of say, is there any specific emails you want to make sure that are blocked from a list or blocked from receiving any further campaigns from us or the company? And then I would just say, apologise. And then, yeah, don't like think about it too much because yeah, it's something that just comes with the territory, I guess. I think the best approach is, yeah, like, kill them with kindness. Like, just mm. apologise for like, any inconvenience. Happy to send them another piece that might be more relevant to them. Yeah. But also, I feel like if you, if you do... St- get back to them you know they could just be having a bad day so you could get back to them and say I'm really sorry I've um, I've taken you off the list I've done everything within my power to like make sure you shouldn't receive any more so yeah. sometimes they reply again and just mm-hmm. say oh thank you or like it was I even if it wasn't your fault or yeah. whatever so then that makes you feel a little bit better because you're like okay well at least they know that I've done everything now to yeah. help them. That's it. And if, if you've taken them out of that mailing list, they're not going to receive anything and then there's no more contact. Yeah. Um, so like one of my own experiences I had, I got a response back from a journalist to a piece I sent out and the topic wasn't as quite relevant as it could have been for her, but she said what she'd prefer to be sent. So I sent her another piece because I kept it in mind and she actually posted that instead. So it's yeah. important to note, like, to keep those people in mind who prefer other things and they might actually post that instead. I think that's why it's that's how you like build relationships with journalists as well because then they know that they've told you that they don't want to receive something but you've they've also told you what they do want to receive so then you could just send an email specifically to them saying you know hi I've got like what you asked for and then that way you've created a relationship with the journalist and then next time you have something that might be similar or they've asked you for something that you might be writing about in the future, you can just send it straight to them. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, it's Lara from... Yeah, keep it in mind. I actually had a reply recently from a journalist um, who replied to like one of my crypto pieces and it was Bitcoin came out on top or something. And he was actually really constructive. He said like, you know, maybe try a different approach because it might get picked up more, like try this way and this way, like constructive. And that really helped. And he was like, I'd be happy to see it again kind of thing. So that was really helpful when it's like constructive criticism. Also, because they kind of let you know what like different ways that they like to like look at press releases and what they might, the way they prefer to read it. Like if they prefer to have no bullet points, like straight to the point kind of thing. So yeah, I think that's a good way of, even if you get a grumpy journalist, it might turn out into someone who's not grumpy. Yeah, I think just show like kindness and like politeness and you don't have to mm. act like you're in the wrong and like say, oh, I'm so sorry. Like it just be like, sorry, this piece wasn't relevant to you. Yeah. And just kind of like change it in that way. So it's not like you don't have to take the full responsibility for it because it could have been relevant, just maybe not that time. And you're never necessarily gonna know like all the time. E- like I had someone email me and say, can you take my personal email off of a list or whatever? But 
that was the only email that I had seen anyway. So I was like, of course. But then he said, if you want my PR email address, then this is it. So then oh, so that's another email that I can add to any list. Yeah, just like contact preferences. Yeah, yeah perfect. Thanks for watching today's episode. Look forward to the next one.